we've seen that the region occupied in space by the electron in an atom can be described by a wave function. And this region described by the wave function is also called an orbital. Now, let us consider the simplest possible atom, which is the hydrogen atom. It is an atom with one nucleus, which is a proton, and a single electron. And we like to answer the question, what wave function best describes the distribution of the electron in the hydrogen atom? Now, the answer to that question is this. It is that wave function, or that orbital, with the lowest energy. So the next question is, which orbital has the lowest energy? Well, it turns out that orbitals with simpler shapes have lower energies than orbitals with more complicated shapes. The 1s orbital is very simple, and it's also the orbital with the lowest energy. So, the electron in the hydrogen atom is likely to occupy the 1s orbital, the orbital with the lowest energy. Now, let's assume this electron has excess energy, some extra energy to spare. Then, it can actually occupy another orbital of higher energy. What is the next orbital in line? Those are the orbitals with n equals 2, the 2s and the 2p. They have a higher energy than the levels in n equals 1, the 1s. So the 2s and the 2p are higher in energy than the 1s. Now remember that these orbitals actually are wave functions. So for instance, the 2p orbitals can be described by a wave function which has n equals 2, l equals 1, and three values of ml. The orbitals with the next lowest energies are the ones in the level 3, n equals 3. These are the 3s, the 3p, and the 3d. So we see from this diagram that the energy of the orbitals actually scales with n. The lower n, the lower the energy, higher n's have higher energy. Now, what is the situation in atoms other than hydrogen? Well, the situation is actually kind of similar. The orbitals have very similar shapes. The energies are also rather similar. However, there are important differences. Atoms other than the hydrogen atom have more than one electron. That means there are electron-electron interactions. And these interactions will shift around the energy levels of the orbitals. And this is what it looks like. The lowest energy orbital is, again, the 1s. By the next in line, n is 2, there are differences. The 2s has a lower energy now than the 2p. Previously, these were the same. In n equals 3, we see a similar pattern. The 3s is lower in energy than the 3p, and the 3d has the highest energy. The shifting of these levels is due, again, to the electron-electron interactions. So we see here that for polyelectronic atoms, atoms with more than one electron, atoms other than hydrogen, the energy levels of the orbitals follow this diagram. Which means that for any given n, the s orbitals have the lowest energy, followed by the p orbitals, followed by the d orbitals, followed by the next in line, which are the f orbitals. Now, the ordering of energies can actually be very conveniently uh, drafted in the following chart. The lowest energy is the orbital 1s. The next orbital with the lowest energy is the 2s. And if you follow the arrows here, we see 2p is next in line, followed by 3s. You follow the arrows again, and we find that 3p is followed by 4s. Now, this is interesting because the 4s has quantum number n equals 4, while 3d has n equals 3. But 4s, the 4s orbital, has a lower energy than the 3d orbital. The 3d orbital is next, followed by 4p and 5s. And if you follow the arrows, we can complete the ordering of the orbital energies. In this case, we see that 1s has a lower energy than 2s, which has a lower energy than 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, and so forth. So far, we have talked about the shape and the energy of the orbital. The orbital is described by a wave function, which has three quantum numbers, n, l, and ml. However, there is a fourth quantum number. This is a quantum number that has nothing to do with the orbital itself, and has everything to do with the intrinsic properties of the electron. It turns out the electron has two states. These are called spin states. One is spin up, and the value of the quantum number is plus half. 
and one is spin down, indicated by the arrow pointing downwards. The value of the quantum number is minus half. So, the spin quantum number can only have two values, plus half and minus half. The total electron wave function, therefore, is as follows. It is psi with four labels. The first three labels we have seen. Those are the orbital quantum numbers, nL and mL. There are three of them. The last quantum number, the fourth quantum number, is the electron spin quantum number. There's only one of it, and it can only have two values. Now, you can think about this electron wave function in the following way. Think about the electron as being a car on a highway system around a city. The highway system, you can actually look at it on a map, and this map could be described by certain parameters. These parameters are equivalent to the quantum numbers of the orbital, the spatial distribution of where the electron is allowed to go. Now, the car itself, inside there's a driver, and let's assume it could be a, ma a male or a female, which is two different states. So these two different states correspond to the two different states of the electron. It's an intrinsic property of the car itself. So the electron spin quantum number has a different character than the orbital quantum numbers. Now, looking at this electron wave function, there's actually a very important statement we can make if we apply this to atoms. Pauli's principle says the following. It says that in an atom, no two electrons can have the same set of quantum numbers. What does that mean? Well, it means the following. Let's assume there's an electron that occupies a certain orbital. That means the first three quantum numbers are determined by the orbital in which the electron sits. So n, l, and ml are determined. The last quantum number, ms, you can choose. It can either be plus half or minus half. However, if you put an extra electron in the same orbital, which means it has the same three quantum numbers for the orbit, the last quantum number must be different according to Pauli's principle. So no two electrons can have the same set of quantum numbers. Now this has very important consequences. If you try to address the following question, how many electrons fit into an orbital? Here's a 2p orbital. Remember, it's a wave function with the labels n equals 2, l equals 1, and for instance, ml equals 0. Now, let's put an electron in this wave function, or in this orbital. The electron, for instance, can have ms equals plus half, spin up. This is one set of quantum numbers, the orbital quantum numbers and the electron spin quantum number. Now, we put an extra electron in this orbital. The new set of quantum numbers of the second electron must be different from the first. Now, since the electron has an intrinsic quantum number, this quantum number must be different from the first. For instance, minus half. It must be different because the orbital quantum numbers are the same. So these two electrons have a different set of quantum numbers. However, if we try to put a third electron in there, there's no other possibilities left. The first three are determined, and we exhausted all the possibilities for the electron spin quantum number. Consequently, the third electron must go into a different orbital. So that means that only two electrons can occupy an orbital. One would spin up, one would spin down. OK, let us summarize this. You've seen that wave functions have different energies. And you've seen that in the hydrogen atom, these energies correspond to orbitals having different energies. The scaling is such that lower values of n have lower energies, and orbitals with higher values of n have higher energies. In poly electronic atoms, atoms with more than one electron, the levels are slightly shifted. And this leads to the following ordering of orbital energies. The 1s is the lowest, followed by 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, and so forth. We also saw that the electron has an intrinsic quantum number, and ms, which is called the electron spin quantum number. Now, this spin quantum number only has two values. If you combine this with Pauli's principle, we saw that in an orbital, only two electrons can fit, because only two electrons can have different set of quantum numbers. A third one would actually replicate a set of one of the first two. Now, this set of rules, this set of principles, 
governs the structure of the periodic table. It actually tells you why certain elements are organized in a particular way in the periodic table. And this is the topic of the next segment.